What happens when a nation stops following principle and starts forsaking it? You see that happening at an accelerating pace in our culture. More things that seem to be amazingly hypocritical on a daily basis. Truth is, is it's as though, though truth does not exist other than what the person in power says truth is. No rationality, no consistency, no logic behind it. But that's not something new. It's something that's been around for millennia. So by the time we have together on this occasion and even the next, I want to talk about those kind of problems that are expressed in the Old Testament book of Jeremiah. Humanity really has not improved. In fact, we see regression just like happened back in his day. Jeremiah lived during the height of the Assyrian Empire and at the beginning of the Babylonian. In chapter 2 of Jeremiah, beginning in verse 1, the Lord came to me, Jeremiah says, saying this, Go and cry in the hearing of Jerusalem, saying, Thus says the Lord, I remember you. I remember the kindness of your youth. I remember the love of your betrothal. I remember the first fruits of your increase. I remember when you were holiness to the Lord. But there's a change, and it's dramatic. The change is this, verse 5. What injustice is have your fathers found in me, God says, that they have gone far from me? They followed idols, become idolaters. They fashioned idols of their own choosing, their own making. They have come up with things on their own to do away with any kind of principle that they really needed to follow. It's a, dramatic, it's a dramatic change, and the reason behind it is found in the following verses. In verse number 6, they didn't say, well, where is the Lord who brought us up out of the land of Egypt? It's like we're forgetting history. Does that sound familiar? We're forgetting it altogether. There's an absence of concern about what lessons could have been learned and should have been learned from the past. So much so that in verse number 7, I brought you into a bountiful country, God says, to eat its fruit and its goodness. But when you entered, you defiled my land, made my heritage an abomination. The graciousness of God is something that's totally ignored, abused, denigrated, condemned. Down in verse number 8, the priest did not say, Where is the Lord? Those who handle the law did not know me. The rulers also transgressed against me. The prophets prophesied to false idols. The leaders, they didn't have any direction because they gave up the direction that was previous to them, that was in their grasp. But they repudiated it, saying that we know better. If you start putting that from the days of the Babylonian Empire, millennia ago, to where we are today, to see the similarities? The similarities exist all over the place. Leaders without direction. And it continues. We'll come back to that in a moment. Then in verse number 9, I'll bring charges against you, says the Lord, against your children's children. I'll bring charges. Because that coming judgment is something that is the only thing left. They've exchanged what is good for something that's evil. Verse 11 and verse 12. This Has a nation changed its gods which are not gods? But my people have changed their glory for what does not profit. Be astonished, O heavens, at this. Be, be horribly afraid. Be very desolate, says the Lord. For my people who have... My people have committed two evils. They've forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and carved for themselves cisterns, broken cisterns, water tanks. But they're broken. They hold no water at all. And what the statement, the statement envisions people that think, hey, we, we actually have elevated ourselves and do not realize they've left themselves destitute. So what you have in this particular situation are people that are exchanging what is good for something that's evil. Something, exchanging something that is true for something that's false. And that is happening at a rapid pace. That seems to multiply daily. Down in verse 17 and following, the results of forgetting what is right, forsaking what is right, the results of refusing to follow what is right. You've brought this on yourself, he says in verse 17. 
verse 18, your own wickedness will correct you. Your backslidings will rebuke you. Know therefore and see that it is an evil and bitter thing that you have forsaken the Lord your God. Bitter and evil thing that you have forsaken what is true and correct. A bitter and evil thing that you have forsaken what is consistent and clamored for inconsistency. That you desecrate logic, want to live illogically. The things that are rational are avoided, silenced, and that irrationality rules the day. In verse 21 and 22, how then have you turned before me into a degenerate plant? And he, he pictures a, a gardener that actually has some very beautiful plants growing. He takes care of them. He tends to them. He waters them. But then something happens. I planted you a noble vine. How then have you turned before me into the degenerate plant of an alien vine? Your iniquity is marked before me, he says in verse 22. You think you're improving things? You haven't. You're bent on self-destruction. Then in verse 23, how can you say, I'm not polluted. I've not gone against or gone after false gods. I've not gone against you. Self-deception. Then in verse 26 and 27, as a thief is ashamed when he is found out, so is the house of Israel ashamed. They and their kings and their princes and their priests and their prophets, their sorrow that they're, they're sorrowful that they got caught. The sorrow, the sadness is not that they did anything wrong, but ultimately that they got caught. We're beginning to see in, in our culture today, finally, some investigative journalism that's almost extinct taking place in those that have been corrupt are beginning to be caught. But it goes much deeper than that because problems actually started a lot earlier than this. So down in the first 27 through 30, recognize where true help is actually found. And the statement is made that in the time of trouble, these people that have refused to listen to me actually turn to me. And they say, arise and save us. And here's what God says. Where are the gods you fabricated, that you made for yourselves, let them arise. If they can see if they can save you from your troubles. This kind of problem is something that is ongoing and seems to be cyclical. The cycle happens over and over again. Humanity does not learn. The intelligence of humanity, it hasn't become better at all in all these hundreds and hundreds and thousands of years. There is a pattern to forgetting. Verse number 32, my people have forgotten me days without number because they seek their own way. In verse 34, on your skirts is found the blood of the lives of the poor innocents. I'm not founded by a secret search, by, but by plainly seeing all these things. There is a problem. And you're saying, verse 35, you're saying we're, we're innocent. We're innocent. We didn't create this problem. It's a position of delusion. What happens when you stop following principles that are true and forsake principles that are true? Take a look around you. We see that happening every day. It's a sad situation for humanity. The prayer of all of us should be, when will civilization, when will humanity, when will consciousness actually arise again and wake up what is really true. Problems continue. Please stay safe. We'll talk again soon.